Welcome to another episode of the Bleeding Edge of Digital Health. Really excited about uh, today's guest. We've got Rami Webby of Match Day with us today. Rami, how are you doing? It's uh, great to be on the show. I'm great. It's a nice chilly morning here in Austin, which we don't get too often. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, excited to be on the show with you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. So you're CEO and founder of Match Day, which... Um, it's a really, really neat concept, a community of doc, uh, four doctors, by doctors, and really essentially, you know, I, the way, if we were to boil it down, I would say, you know, kind of what the main thing you guys do is, is find doctors, their dream jobs, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so I'm actually a family doctor myself by training and, um, you know, started a community uh, around actually my own podcast called Beyond Medicine. And you know, after I built that community and doctors were hearing healthcare entrepreneurs, other doctors doing things outside of clinical medicine, it sort of started to build. Um, I started to see that there was this interest from doctors to pursue non clinical careers, advisory careers, consulting careers, and trying to understand how to use their clinical experience in non clinical ways. And so I built a community around that. Um, you know, grew to several hundred physicians. And from there, um, you know, pretty organically started just helping doctors get jobs. And that's really how Match Day essentially started. What's the, um, so what's the use case for this, right? There's, you know, there's uh, umpteen different types of um, roles that physicians can play in healthcare, whether it's, you know, just a standard physician, a locums, et cetera. But what, what's the problem you're trying to solve? Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, I think multiple problems grouped under one category of maybe let's call it physician staffing or healthcare staffing. And, you know, one of the biggest problems is, you know, just the shortage of doctors that we currently have and that we're going to face over the next 10 years. And I think that just spans across all of healthcare. So over the next 10 years, we'll have a shortage of over 100,000 physicians. Um, we're not creating wow. any new medical schools. We're not creating enough new residency slots. And so we're really not addressing the supply problem at all. And, you know, add on top of that, we've now got more options for physicians to work from home. There's more remote opportunities. There's more industry jobs and non-clinical careers that we maybe weren't around 10 years ago. And so on top of the shortage, we actually have more competition for physicians, um, especially uh, for phys especially for um, hospitals trying to hire doctors for traditional jobs, because now there's a lot more attractive opportunities elsewhere for doctors to go. And we sort of saw this during the pandemic where a large amount of physicians actually left the workforce and now some of them are, you know, starting to trickle back in. And so, you know, one of the problems is this shortage, but also, you know, when I was thinking about, you know, what could we possibly do to create a better healthcare system where, you know, every physician is practicing at the top of their license, they're staying in the market for as long as possible, they're helping their communities uh, and, and, and interacting with patients more directly, more often, rather than spending time out of the market or working part-time because they're burned out or, um, you know, just leaving medicine completely. And so I thought if we could help every doctor have their dream job where they're not unsatisf unsatisfied, they're not burned out, um, and they're more interested in serving their communities, uh, then, you know, we may not solve that cert the supply problem, but we can at least help the current doctors that we have, uh, work at the, the highest level that their license allows them to, and also stay in the market rather than sit, spend a lot of time out of the market, which is currently happening. And so that was kind of like my thought process around, uh, you know, the problem that I wanted to solve. And, you know, you know, downstream from that, there's all the inefficiencies of healthcare recruiting, um, you know, the, the, style in which physicians are recruited and just the entire user experience I thought could be re reinvented. And so that's the, talk the a, talk, Rami, talk yeah. a little bit about that because the, you, when we spoke a while back, you had explained like physicians literally are getting 
you know, tens of twenties of emails a day, uh, you know, recruiting them into positions. And it's almost to a point where they can't, they can't even keep up with it. So they just delete everything. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So there's a huge amount of spam in the recruiting process for physicians specifically. And, you know, I'm sure for other professionals as well, but for doctors, because they are, uh, you know, super, you know, very, I would say relatively high income earners, there's, you know, large paychecks attached to them getting a do- getting a job. And that creates incentive to, uh, you know, get any doctor to take your, to take your healthcare opening or your, your, your open position, especially if you're, you know, a, a traditional healthcare recruiting company. And so what ends up happening is doctors get, you know, 10 to 20 jobs a day. Um, they've sort of gotten uh, desensitized to all of these opportunities and they just glaze over them. Yeah. And so even if a great opportunity comes along for a physician, they don't know about it. They just think it's another one of those jobs that's not good and just sitting there in their email. Yeah. And so, you know, when they are ready for a job or let's say they are, you know, now looking actively looking for a job, they might glaze through their email. They might talk to one or two of those recruiters, um, but they don't really find what they're looking for. They find what's being pushed to them. And, you know, job boards are a terrible experience. Um, the second you log in and you post, you know, you know, you even show that you're active, you start getting a lot more spam. Uh, LinkedIn is just like this abyss where, you know, you post your resume and it just gets lost and you never hear from anybody about anything. Right. And so there really just isn't a good process for physicians. And so I thought if we could take some of that fragmentation and um, create some cohesion around it, create just one place for doctors to find any job, have one point of contact rather than maybe six different recruiters and make sure our incentives are aligned so that we can really help that physician find that, that perfect job opportunity for them. And so that's the, basically the premise and the inspiration for why we did this and, you know, some of the underlying problems, which is of course, spam. Yeah. What, let's talk about the platform specifically. I'm guessing the name match is a, is a play on, um, on match.com or a, uh, a reference to that, but that would, which is brilliant by the way, but, um, <laughs> but, but many don't know that match day is, is the day when physicians find out when they, where they match with what residency programs or whatnot. Right. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, it's a play, it's a little bit of a play on nostalgia. Right. Um, so for, for doctors, match day is a really special day for those that, you know, match to their first job. They're excited. They're thrilled. It's a, you know, it's a very proud moment that they share with their family. And it's such a really emotional day for doctors. They sit amongst their colleagues, they open up that letter and it's their first job. And so, you know, when I was thinking about what do we want to create with match day, we want to recreate that experience where doctors are excited to get a job. Yeah. Right. And there's no more exciting day than match day for physicians. Yeah. And so this was, and I, and I need to give my credit to my uh, business partner, Yanni for, for inspiring this, this was really his genius. And, you know, we, uh, that we, you know, when we heard match day and we, we, you know, we slept on it for a day and I was like, the next day I was like, yes, this is it. Um, yeah. Yeah. and you know, I, ironically, um, I never, I didn't have a good experience for, with match day uh, myself. I didn't ended up, I didn't end up matching on match day. And so for me, match day was actually a very disappointing day, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, it's interesting now that I get to maybe relive or make up for that experience by helping other doctors have, uh, have a match day of their own. Yep. No, absolutely. What's the, um, Who's the, who's the target client for you guys? Are you guys targeting exclusively hospitals, industry? Um, what, what Who's the target client? What specialties are you guys placing, you know, at present? And are you, you know, is there potential to look at getting into like the mid-levels and the nurses at, at some point? Yeah, absolutely. So we started off with, um, with these non-clinical jobs. Um, industry jobs, physician executive jobs. So think of like a chief medical officer for a startup, 
uh, chief of uh, VP of medical affairs, a clinical operations leader, medical director, et cetera, medical yeah. director. Yeah. So, you know, we started, we started there because we found that a lot of these jobs are remote and we had already, already built a national sort of community of physicians. Um, most of the physicians in our community were executive level or searching for some kind of executive level type of job. And um, it was just a natural cohesion for us starting there. And and it, that's actually what attracts doctors to us because they know that we post these jobs that they're not really finding anywhere else, maybe on LinkedIn, but on LinkedIn, you know, um, it's like an application of this. Uh, so yeah, it is. So it's that's a total it's, black hole. I yeah. agree. So, so, so that's where Match Day kind of found its footing. Uh, but I think the bigger vision here is really getting in for the next year with local Texas hospital systems and getting uh, getting a getting a, a, a foothold with with the local community so that we can get the best jobs into match day and start to present and help doctors uh, with the best jobs here in Texas and then you know take over state by state from there and um, I think that just allows us to build our, you know, sort of marketplace effects where we can match supply and demand. Uh, but, you know, the bigger vision is we want to, we want to have hospital systems. We want to have industries. We want to have startups. Anybody that is looking to hire a physician for any role should be able to come to match day and talk to their ideal candidates. And, yeah. you know, Beyond that, we hope to bring in locums opportunities, travel opportunities, side gigs, and user research. So really, it's a one-stop shop for doctors, you know, earning income, whether that's yeah. full-time all the way down to even user research. So the idea of Match Day, so when you log in, you immediately get this very unique user experience that's tailored for you as a physician. So um, we collect information that's you know relevant to the type of job you're looking for, whether you're looking for full-time or part-time, if you're looking for just maybe five to 10 hours a week of some extra work, um, or if you're looking for something uh, related to startups, advisory consulting, we ask you questions that you really don't get asked anywhere else. Um, and we build a profile around that and we use really specific, we, we try to get very granular. Um, so we also ask about the type of physicians you're looking for, leadership, academic, clinical, patient-facing. Um, there's a pretty clean, swift onboarding process that physicians go through to build their profile, and, and we do it incrementally, so it's not too much all at once. Um, and the idea here is we build this very this comprehensive profile for doctors that they can present and show to the outside-facing hiring world so that they can get so that uh, hiring managers and recruiters can actually um, you know apply to work with them so it's almost like their online resume rather than them going to an apply board submitting their resume filling in a bunch of questions we've sort of already gathered this information pre-screened it vetted it verified it and now it's there for the doctor to sort of be like a it's a spotlight on the doctor and yep. employers can now uh, take a look and find out pretty quickly if this is a good candidate for their job or not. And doctors don't need to go through um, you know this long application process over and over again. It's just one time, and they're unless they want to update their profile, they just kind of get to sit back, relax, and and you know get the best jobs uh, presented to them. What's the secret sauce to it? Is it is it the fact that you guys are you get super granular about what it is that they're looking for, and and that way it can kind of weed out the masses and and really just hyper target that candidate for whatever physician or whatever uh, companies or hospitals are looking, and it, it and can it work in reverse if they see something you know a posting online that they're interested in, can they apply? Yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, so I say the secret sauce is two parts. So uh, one is the algorithmic matching that we really get very granular on and collect more pieces of data to match physicians on. So lifestyle, cultural preferences, specific work preferences. We collect a lot more data around 
uh, attributes that make a doctor that that a doctor is looking for in the job, but also attributes that employers are looking for in these candidates. Um, so, you know, if they've got startup experience or if they've got industry experience, if they've worked with product, um, if they've led a team or if they've managed other physicians, these types of things become data points for us to match candidates yeah. and really uh, fine tune that match score so that they see how good of a fit they are to that job, but also employers can see how 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 specifically good is this physician for the job and they can rank them in order. And so um, it's a much more data-driven approach to hiring rather than kind of going in blind into each conversation. And on the other end of that, uh, physicians can... Um, can tell us what they want. And so each doctor has a personal match day agent that we are actually building uh, AI GPT agents to help support so that when doctors come to match day, they're immediately presented with a match day agent that they can talk to and say, hey, I'm looking for a job in Austin, Texas starting um, October 21st. And I'd like to make this much salary and I'd like to have this type of a work environment. What kind of jobs are out there that fit what I'm looking for? And their GPT agent essentially will pull in all the jobs in our network and present them with those jobs so that they can start um, favoriting, applying them and letting that employer know they're interested. And mm -hmm. on the other end of that, employer, hiring manager, recruiter is notified and they can start a conversation and that can all happen in the match day platform. And so- you know, part of the secret sauce is um, just the timing of all of this. Generative AI being a huge opportunity to create better matches, but also to scale uh, some of these meaningful conversations, like having a personal agent, having a, even an AI recruiter for our for our clients, and um, an even an AI interviewer that can jump on a call and find out the most pertinent information to screen in or screen out a candidate. Um, and these are functions that we can really build out with, with AI tools that are, that are available today and have never been available before. So, um, you know, I'm really, really excited about uh, just kind of the positioning that we're in and the timing that we're entering the space because it allows us to innovate in ways that really hasn't ever been done before. Yeah. Especially, you know, with the, with the work from X, uh, mentality that came out of COVID, you know, I mean, I, I, you hear stories of physicians that went overseas and were working, um, you know, just uh, radiologists that were, were, um, you know, reading scans from Italy or France or whatever, <laughs> while they were on vacation during COVID. So I would think that, that this would be, you know, for those clinicians that didn't want to be tied to any one specific area, this would give them a, a real targeted approach to, to finding new opportunities as they, you know, move about from one place to another. How, yeah. what's the, what's, what's the turnaround time for, for like, let's say, you know, Herman Memorial in Houston decides they want to open up a, a, you know, a medical director position with you guys. Mm -hmm. What What's the turnaround from when they, you know, they, they go ahead and open the rec with you guys and then, and, you know, and, and then when they're, they start seeing candidates. Yeah, so the turn is basically immediately. So we start presenting candidates on day one uh, because we already have a, a robust network of physicians that we know are actively looking for jobs. And so uh, we start presenting our clients with, with candidates on the first day. Um, you know, we've got a tiered approach essentially to how we present our clients with physicians. Um, some of it's a more passive process where it's, you know, a job posting and, you know, uh, kind of like a, a, a pushing up of the relevant candidates. But then there's also a more um, personalized, high touch uh, model that allows us to engage our internal recruiting team, which in, surely will be our AI recruiter to scan and more actively talk to candidates and push that opportunity higher up uh, into their uh into their view essentially right. and so um i think that i think that with every job i think especially moving forward every job has to become more competitive and because there's more transparency in the market with technology 
jobs just have to get better to stay competitive. And so um, I think that we'll be able to provide that real-time feedback to our clients, to our employers, to show them, you know, your job is not ranking high amongst physicians because it doesn't meet some of these criteria. These are what your competitors who are matching with candidates and who are having success are doing. And this is what maybe the actual salary should be. This is what some of the benefits should be. And so we can help our clients actually uh, fine tune their posting and make it better so that they know what the market is demanding um, rather than just having their job posting sit there uh, without, you know, just collecting dust. Yeah. Yeah. We, we call it at the Mullins group, we call it, uh, you know, data-driven feedback. You you know, it's, it's, if you go go back to a client and say, here's our recommendations, that's one thing. But if you go back and say, here's our recommendations and here's the data that supports it, it's, it's, yes. it, it, it's a, it lands differently. Um, what, exactly. um, what, so commercially, let's talk about like, is this available now? Are you, are you guys actively working with clients now? And, um, and what's the, um, the model? Is it a SaaS model? Is it, uh, you know, pay per placement? How does it work? Yeah, so we're so so we are a software technology company. Our employer facing model is now live, so our clients can actually log into our platform and find their most compatible uh, physician candidates. And we provide even a, a, a higher touch option where we actively engage and help with the recruitment and screening process. Um, we've got over five hundred physicians that are now part of the Match Day platform and community. And they get to engage with each other. Uh, we provide support resources and sort of networking opportunities for the doctors as being part of the community. Um, but we also are presenting them with these, you know, initial industry jobs, startup jobs that they're uh, that they're interest, interested in. Uh, so over the next couple of months, that'll become a bit more robust, where both sides of the marketplace will have more interaction with each other. Um, so that's coming up in the next uh, three months. Mind you, we're only six months old at this stage. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited for that to start playing out. Um, but yeah, so we're a software technology company. We are looking to disrupt the model of healthcare staffing. So, you know, I don't think that we should be charging our clients hundred thousand dollar placement fees. I think that we can create a model that, um, is more a subscription service, and is a supportive tool to help with hiring. And I think by doing that, we can, you know, significantly reduce the cost of healthcare hiring, increase, uh, you know, basically create, make it much faster to hire qualified physicians by presenting, you know, the most qualified candidates right from the start. And uh, just overall making the process, the, the hiring process more efficient for yeah. hiring physicians. I, I, I can only imagine like, Companies like Row and Hims that need, you know, 10, 20, 30 physicians, um, you know, I, 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 that just seems like an obvious fit. I'm sure that's that's exactly where you guys have, have started, probably started your journey, right? Yeah, exactly. So we've, we've figured out how to really drive value to some of these, um, you know, virtual telemedicine companies. And, you know, what we've learned is, for them, uh, one of the most important things, especially today and what's different than ever before is that state licenses have become important for hiring. And so telemedicine companies like HIMS and Roe, you know, might require a minimum of 10 state licenses uh, for, a, for a physician to be considered for that job. And right now they actually don't have any way to know prior to talking to the candidate or collecting some information or having them apply to a job what states they're licensed in. yeah, And yeah. so with Match Day, they're able to put in the states that they're actually looking to screen in and see all the relevant candidates that are licensed in those states. And this is a really big value add that we've essentially brought to these uh, telemedicine companies because right off the bat, if they're looking for a Texas, Florida, and California licensed physician, they're able to identify those candidates and talk to them immediately. And so this could serve save them literally weeks or even months of talking to candidates who are just not the right fit. 
And yeah. I think that we provide a tremendous amount of value with that offering for for them specifically. Uh, it's really neat. I can definitely see a huge application for it, especially with those tele telemedicine companies. Um, I want to be sensitive to time and get you out of here um, as scheduled. But uh, I guess one last question, kind of where are you guys at funding wise uh, in terms of, you know, the stage of the company and et cetera? Yeah. So we started, uh, we raised the family and friends round and that allowed us to uh, really build out our MVP and start working with our first few clients, learn from them, uh, create, uh, you know, understand our process better, um, build our community and just, you know, create the foundation for match day. You know, we built our database and all the foundational elements of our tech. And, you know, right now we're going to raise another fund. We'll call it a pre-seed or a seed. And uh, we're looking to raise about a, a million and a half dollars to build our product uh, MVP fully, um, uh, onboard more clients and grow our revenue uh, for the next year and really focus here on Texas, uh, building those marketplace effects that we hope to start seeing. And so uh, that's where we're currently at. Of course, you know, fundraising always takes time away from your from your business. And I don't think I know any founder that actually enjoys fundraising, but it's- uh, Especially it's in this process. environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in this environment, it's from what I've, this is my first time fundraising. So um, from what I've heard, it's particularly harder now than it was before, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that for our stage, uh, for the amount of traction that we've shown in a very sh short amount of time, uh, for our capital efficiency and really what we've built with very little- um, spend. Uh, I think our investors will be impressed with kind of what we've done, what we've been able to achieve with our team. Um, you know, we were, I work with the smartest people I know and the best people I know. Um, and I think really the team is, uh, for any startup, probably the most important piece, uh, for a company because there will always be pivots there will always be changes. The story will always change. Oh yeah. And I think the the one thing that'll stay constant is the leadership and the team and the team's ability to uh, continue pursuing that vision and uh, be relentless towards it. And I think that's something we have going for ourselves. We're mission aligned and um, you know, I'm really excited to be building this. I think this is something for me that is very personal um, in a sense that, uh, this is a problem I faced and it's, it's something I want to do for my community, for physicians and, um, you know, how match day will change or where it will evolve and grow is still to be, de to be de determined. Um, but I think that, uh, I think, you know, if there is a right team to build something like this, it's definitely our team. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking to, to connect with the right investors that, believe in our vision, believe in us, want to support us, want to see us change um, healthcare staffing and and be part of this journey with us. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt that, like you said, we're going to, we're going through a huge uh, transition where we're going to, there's going to be a glut of, or, or, or a big uh, scarcity of physicians, mid-levels, et cetera. So, um, you know, keeping, keeping that community engaged and in the right roles and whether, whether that's full-time, you know, part-time locums, whatever, it's going to be imperative uh, to, to, to prop in this, the system up. So, um, thanks for what you guys are doing and, and excited, uh, to watch from the sidelines. And, and, uh, I'm sure you guys will be insanely successful. Yanni's got a, a heck of a track record and, and, uh, I love what I see so far. So wishing you guys continued success. Thanks for, for coming on today. And, um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to following you guys moving forward. Yeah, and Mike, thank you for this opportunity. Also, uh, just for your you know previous support and your advice. You know, I've come to you multiple times now to to get your advice on just you know little things here and there, and you've been incredibly helpful to us. And you know, uh, I hope that we can continue working with you guys in the future, learning from you and supporting your show. Um, I love what you're doing with this show, and thanks for having me on. You got it, man. That's it for this edition of the Bleeding Edge of Digital Health. We'll catch you on the next episode.